Hello. 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 Hi. Hi, it's me. It's me, Josh. Um, I'm just thinking I need to grab something else. Oh, I have some right here. Never mind. Um, I was going to paint, paint my hand, um, the other material that I was waiting for, the Kato clear liquid stuff, uh, didn't show up on time, so I'll have to do that maybe, maybe Wednesday. Um... So in the meantime, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this guy's helmet. Oh, also you should check out I burnt my finger pretty bad. You ready for this? Yeah, that's a badly burnt finger right there. So I <laughs> I baked this thing in uh, the oven just as a test. You know, I was testing the different paint techniques on it last time. And uh, so I baked it, turned it off after, you know, the 10 minutes or whatever, um, and then forgot it was in there. And then a couple days ago, I decided to bake uh, a meatloaf and preheated the oven to 350 while this thing was in here. And boy, did this smell really bad for a while. But this is what happens when you, uh, when you cook Sculpey at 350. It's actually surprisingly like not bad except for the little tips and places where it was touching the, the cookie sheet. So I'm glad it wasn't my final piece. That would have made me very, very, very sad. Julio, hello. Light strike. Howdy, howdy. All right, again, just because not everyone watches every stream, I'm gonna reestablish what's going on here. Uh, this is this is the idea. We've got we've got a disembodied hand that is a magically animated mount that our little hand wizard here controls with his little power glove, and um, I have it all sculpted and baked, and I still need to paint all the different um it's got its base coat on which is just the color of the clay and then i'm going to go in and do the parts that are a little more red and white and, and you know vein colors and all that kind of stuff uh once i am sure which paint technique i want to use i did some experiments last time and there's one more material i have yet to try so um what i've got for the little because i'm trying to give the idea that this is sort of a semi-sentient mount. Um, I got the middle finger raised up in a pseudo head-like looking shape. And I was gonna have them have this kind of Vikingish helmet or something. Um, once I actually sculpted the nail on there though, the piece that I started out with, uh, it's not doing the trick because it uh, doesn't follow the contour of the nail. So I think what I'm going to try now is I'm going to wrap the finger up and put the, put the clay onto it that way, just directly onto it. And that way it will, can't help but contour properly. Uh, I'm going to be using, for the base of it, Propoxy 20. It's a 20 minute epoxy. I wish I had my 5 minute epoxy, but I ran out. So this will take me a little longer than I would like. Morkai, hello! You're alive! Glad to hear it. 
I'd be bummed if you came on and let us know you were dead. Oh, you guys see my my awesome uh, Christmas sweater? Check it. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, it's too cold right now. My little my little heater in my garage is not as powerful as I would like. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of just block it. You can't you can't really sculpt this stuff super well. So I'm just gonna blob in a gesture of what I want, and then I'll carve it as it sets up. That's my plan. Let's see how it goes. Hilariously awry, shall we? Alita, welcome. Uh, yeah, Zombie Mordo would be a good name for a band. water because it's cold in here and otherwise it's gonna make my fingers even more freezing -er. Is that this might actually be too much light Nijik Jovos Pavlov. Is that how you pronounce that? I assume. You love my stuff. Awesome. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I don't remember you uh, coming around before because I don't think I've ever butchered a name that badly. Are you, uh, let's see. You could be Polish. Maybe, maybe uh, Russian. But I don't know. You, you seem you seem northeastern European sounding to me. Tell me how off I am. I take great pride in how ignorant I am of names and the rest of the world. I'm just kidding. I'm not actually proud of that. So because this is going to be a multi-stage process, I want this first um, first step to be pretty. Uh, I'm going to err on the side of making it too thin because I'm going to be adding more volume and details as I go. need to have a lot less on there. JD, welcome. Uh, 
I almost forgot I need to make sure I've got a little section for the jewel to go on. And I need to make sure I'm accommodating his cool little blade horn things. I think this helmet would do a pretty good job of keeping um, jousting, what are they called, lances, lances from breaking his nail and also strengthen it for when he's like stabbing into monsters and stuff. Uh, I'm just going to call you Pavlik, alright, because that's as close as I can get. Uh, you're from Slovenia. Hey, that's cool. Uh, I honestly don't know where Slovenia is. I, I assume it's Eastern Europe. You love the Colossus Project. Awesome. Me too. I can't wait to have that whole thing out and published. I just realized I, I, I haven't been... Um, because I finished it several months ago um, and I haven't been publishing pictures or anything of it because I want to, you know, I want there to be some sort of tension for, ooh, what is this thing going to end up like uh, for the videos? Um, but I just realized I, I shot a behind the scenes video uh, last week and I was editing it yesterday and realized there's a part where I'm talking and it's like, right there in the background you could totally see it so but then I was like eh, I'll just leave that in it is, it is a behind the scenes and it's specifically for patrons you know people who actually uh, support me financially or for people who sign up for my newsletter on uh, breathoflifeart.com which there should be a link to the bottom so if you guys want to get a sneak peek you know how to do it you can just sign up for my newsletter and uh, I'll be sending out a link to that video probably on the first of the month. I think this is getting close to what I'm wanting. These, these things don't quite stick in perfectly, so there's a little bit of wiggle to them, which is annoying. I wish they just like socket it in perfectly, and then uh, I could just leave it there. But as you can see, when I move my hand, it goes Mwah. So I don't know if I just need to hold it for 20 minutes. Mord says, reminds me of a type of ring I saw in a vampire movie once. Yeah, it's pretty goth. Oh, actually that reminds me. I don't know why saying it's goth reminds me, but <laughs> I wanted to have some kind of eye socket-y things in the helmet. Just to just to lend a little more 
of this feeling that this hand has some kind of sentience to it. I sculpted little divots in the fingernail under there to kind of to also gesture at eyes without being literal about there being eyes. So I want to make sure that these helmet holes line up with it. Basically, what I'm what I'm kind of doing is creating a a skull-like form and like a horse or deer, some kind of quadrupedic mammal-like skull. Apparently, I'm just going to distort the clay by leaving these in, so I'm going to try to press it against the hand, remove this, and if it doesn't slot in perfectly, I can just carve back into it to get it to work after it sets up. I don't really want a lot of expression in this little, uh, this little helmet because that kind of pushes it like as I'm experimenting by adding these little brow ridges to give it kind of an angry look I feel like it's pushing it more cartoony than I want it to be It's already intimidating and creepy enough as it is, just being a giant hand steed. It doesn't, <laughs> I don't think it actually adds anything by giving it a, uh, a fake expression. It actually detracts from it. I'm not sure if there's a word for that. Let me think about that. Is there an artistic expression for overdoing something like a technical word for that there should be you basically you keep piling on ideas to the point where you're diluting your original concept I mean I guess overdoing it is is a pretty good summation
But I'm. But why? Why is that a thing? That's what I'm curious about. Why is more not always more? Why? Why is it that more can become less? Mostly I'm just kind of dinking around while I'm waiting for this to set up so I can start carving stuff away. But, you know, I, I have to wait till it's set anyway, so I might as well do experiments. And since I'm going to be carving on it, it's easy to carve away the stuff that I don't want. I'm not sure how sculptural I want to get with this. Maybe that's that's a part of what's bothering me. So if you look at the design language of this guy's chariot, you can see it's very, very simplistic shapes. It's not like sculpted into very, uh, hmm. what's the word for that? I mean, I, I guess it's not organic at all. And if I, if I start sculpting skull-like shape into this, it becomes more organic as opposed to this, which is more just like a plate that's been banged into, a, you know, into the general shape or this original one I did, which was kind of a plate on a plate. This one I couldn't use. It kept breaking because it's made out of um, Sculpey 3? Is that what it was? Whatever it is, whatever that polymer clay is, when it's that thin, it just flakes off when you breathe on it wrong. So, I redid it and epoxy sculpt. Um, and then, yeah, this one's epoxy sculpt. You can see, oh, never mind. It's not that strong, but it's definitely stronger. Either way, um, I'm hoping to get a A similar, a similar vibe of like thin sheets that are hammered into place. Alitha says, Google didn't help me find any good terms for overdoing it in art. You have to think about that. It seems like it's a it's a phenomenon a lot of people are familiar with. It should have a name. Damon, hello, hello. Aletha says, the smoother, sleek simplicity seems to fit the armor look well. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, real armor made by real armor smiths back in the day certainly didn't have all the crazy sculpted forms that, um, fantasy, you know, the way it's portrayed in a lot of video games and fantasy movies and stuff. Because to get that kind of form, you you pretty much have to cast it. You have to make a sculpt it in some material, make a mold, cast it, pour it in, you know, make a bronze version or whatever. And that's just going to be ridiculously heavy on your armor. So it's not very practical. Not that practicality is the top uh, concern or realism for this piece. Um, a lot of my work, I, I strive for that, but this is very magical, fantastical, whimsical sort of design. So I'm not not really worried about it for that. It's more about just having a consistent design language. Pavlik says, "Some artists talk. They're watching you work. I learned the most important thing is being honest about the work you do. Like when you point out." all pros but also cons about let's say a pose yeah um totally 
totally important. And what's what's really interesting is <clears throat> when you're presenting your work as you go, like I'm doing right now with streaming or when I'm filming it for a, a tutorial, um, I find that I'm forced to be honest and articulate that stuff in a way that if I'm just working silently by myself, I don't necessarily think along those lines because I'm not forced to, you know, lazy artists. So um, they tend to be more like subconscious. And so I'll be more or less satisfied with stuff, but I'm not articulating it while I'm going. And it's actually really helpful to do that. So I know there's some people that talk to themselves a lot while they work. And I've kind of, um, since I've been doing tutorials, I found myself doing that. I'm kind of tutorializing myself as I go. It's pretty funny. I mean, basically, articulating to yourself it's just great in all areas of life I realize I mean that's kind of what I've been doing with my my thought life my idea life you know values politics philosophy all that stuff that's what I do on my blog like I just write a 10 page blog about a thing that I'm contemplating and it's that process that leads me to conclusions that are more satisfying to me as opposed to just having some vague unarticulated notion okay I think this stuff is almost set up once I once uh, it snaps when I try to bend it like this that's when I'll know I can start really working on this guy Dottie, hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, I always want to get really sculptural with this kind of thing. Because, because I like sculpture and because the medium lends itself to it. I'm not actually banging this armor out of sheets of metal, right? <laughs> so it's just natural to kind of go with what the uh, with what the medium you're working with, uh, what its strong points are. What's that? This interesting stage where it's easy to cut through right now but it also distorts as you do it so ideally I get it when it's at the phase where it's still fairly easy to slice through but it's not pulling the material around it with it while you do it Public, tell me what countries border Slovenia, just so I have a, a better picture in my mind. I'm curious now. See how it's still kind of flexible? I don't want to take it off till it's till it's nice and firm. It's close.
Donnie, I had a good conversation with your son about heavy metal from the 90s and late 80s. He uh, alerted me to some bands that I hadn't uh, listened to that were influences on the bands that I like that his band reminded me of. So that was fun. Got some, got some new stuff to listen to. I think I'm going to get a new blade on here that'll help me be able to slice without pulling uh, material around with the blade. Alitha, you've heard this song before? Did I did I loan you my um what band is this? The Awakening. Did I loan you this CD at some point? Since it's still not a hundred percent set up, I'm just gonna keep pressing it against the hand, but I'm not worried it, uh, about it um, leaving residue because it's definitely set enough to not leave residue. So now I'm just trying to get a general symmetry to it. Or do you give coworkers some of your old CDs you don't listen to? Yeah, I get that. Uh, we have like a free table at work where people deposit stuff they don't want anymore. So I've ended up with several CDs that way. Just got to the point where I'm ready to abandon CDs forever, and I'm still in a quandary what to do with them. Do I just want to keep them in boxes? And then like, but why? And I can't answer that except I, I don't want, I still want them, <laughs> but I don't know why. I mean, there's the art on them, but do I ever actually like browse through my, you know, the, the booklets of my CDs? No, no, I don't do that. So there's really no rational reason to hold on to that, but I don't know. Sorry. 
little eye dents are like here. So I want the hole for the helmet to be there. And they're a little bit higher than that. Although I guess you really aren't gonna know with the, when this helmet is on there, you're not gonna notice these subtle divots in the nail, regardless. So I should stop caring about that and just focus on the overall form. take off this glove since I keep manhandling this part of it and there's probably some residue from mixing it on this glove. Okay, take off both gloves. Letha says, I haven't quite abandoned CDs, but I recently got an iPod. CDs are nice backup in the car though and the iPod decides to be a jerk and not work. Yeah. Public says Slovenia is next to Italy. My name is kind of like Nike, 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 Nietzsche, like Nietzsche. Okay, so you are not as far north as I thought. My apologies. Close to Italy. Wow. says all the mp3s I buy get uploaded to iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play, so backups. That's good. Then I forget I own them. Yes, that's a problem. Onassis, hello. What's up? What's up is I'm, I'm fighting my impulse to make an overly, um, sculptural and organic helmet and trying to make a more flattened plate-like helmet for a middle finger. You know, like most people usually do on Sunday afternoons. I hear there's this thing called football, which I assume is just another word for fighting your impulse to make a sculptural helmet for a middle finger. one of those things where if I had a very clear vision for exactly the final result I'd be able to just carve right to it really fast but instead I'm just kind of slowly chipping away slowly eroding away the organic forms and ending up with more flat plate like form plate like forms but since the form is uh, fitting over an organic shape, they are necessarily going to be somewhat organic. I'm just trying to make it as um, plate-like as possible, given the constraint that it's wrapping around an organic form.
I scribed these these lines on here because I thought that would be a pretty natural way for the the three-dimensional form to be broken up fast in facets. And it looks like it's pretty close. carving on yet, but I can do these little slivers without distorting it too much, I think. Nijik Josalab Pavlova says, uh, just call me Bob. Cool, Bob. But have you ever heard your name pronounced as beautifully as I just did it, right? Probably not. Onassis says it's coming out great. Thank you. Um, I'm really uh, chomping at the bit to paint this hand because it like, that brings it to the next level, but I did not get the, uh, the paint thinner that I was hoping to get. Uh, from Amazon on Friday, so the painting is going to be waiting. That's cool. I definitely wanted to make this helmet at some point, so it's fine to happen before the painting. <clears throat> Bo Patton. Hey man, appreciate your sculpting tutorials. You did. I learned a lot as a novice sculptor. Awesome, Bo. Glad to hear it. And thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by the live stream. I love hanging out with you guys and chatting. Bob says, I saw the sketch for this and was already blown away, but this is just amazing. Oh, thanks. Um, the, the only thing I see when I look at it is my massive proportion screw up, which is that the, these fingers are so long, they demand that the thumb be quite a bit longer, uh, than it ended up being. The proportions are just totally wrong. This looks like a weird stub thumb. Um, it's one of those things where I would because I had a very particular color uh, mix for the hand, I can't just redo just the thumb because I ran out of the clay. So it's either redo the entire thing or leave it with a dumb stumpy thumb and be embarrassed that my uh, skills at uh, creating proportional sculptures are not as great as I wish they were. And um, the priorities in my life dictate that I have to just let it go and be embarrassed. And that's okay. We'll just say it's uh, it's part of a visual storytelling. We'll say that the giant that he hacked the hand off of was uh, had you know various deformations, and uh, one of them was a stumpy thumb. He had stumpy thumb syndrome. STS I think this is working out pretty good to kind of do this socket around like this. It's not it's not doing that thing where it looks like it's got angry eyes. And because it's um this plane here is so flat when it intersects with this uh, roundish socket, um, it's not getting too sculptural. Oop, oop, I cut through a little too far there. 
don't know if that's bad or not. We'll see. We'll see what happens on the other side. Because I can always fill that in with my next layer of clay if I don't like it. some Kevlar gloves uh, on Amazon and those also have not come yet otherwise I would be wearing them because I just know I'm going to be doing this and the blade's going to slip and go slash and the blood will spatter all over the camera it'll be amazing like a Tarantino art tutorial I'm really nervous about pushing down on this helmet to hold it in place and then that applying pressure on these back fingers and then snapping them or something. That would really suck. But this is still just a little too bendy here to really carve on it hard if it's not on the finger. which makes me like try to stabilize it in weird ways with with my real fingers and then that puts me in danger of you know slipping more so just gonna keep awkwardly poking at it for a while if I wasn't doing this uh, in, on a live stream I would have just let it sit for an hour and gone and done it but it's all good Part of performance art is uh, improvising. socket around here is thicker than it is here. I'll try to carefully carve that back without messing up the uh, skin of the sculpt underneath it. Very delicate.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to thicken up this area with the next layer of clay. to find ways to combine planes as well as possible so I'm thinking the inside of this socket is on a very close plane to this side of the nose for better word <laughs> for, for lack of a better word so if I can pull this the angle that my blade is cutting all the way down to, like that that'll simplify the form can help give me a better, a more faceted armor look. But I'm also thinking this, this is built up too much. So, carve that down a bit. It's just now getting to the point where it's not, um, it's not too, un or it's cured enough. There we go. It's just to the point where it's cured enough where I can do this without um, applying too much pressure and then it breaking off the nail underneath here. And as I do that, I see how wobbly it looks, right? Like it's totally distorted in that direction. Oh, here you can see better. Uh, so I need to carve off more of this. Getting kind of a plague doctor mask vibe to it, which you can't get much cooler than plague doctor masks. So. Maybe because I was playing uh, the Shovel Knight plague doctor um, expansion this morning, just subconsciously in my brain now.
Now on this side I'm getting an interesting thing where I can get the plane of the whole eye socket to just blend into the, the whole nose cone thing. So I'm going to see if I can achieve the same thing on this side because that's that's reducing the number of planes even more which is my goal right now so. still sticking it's still too fat from this part to this part I want to narrow that down to a pretty good pretty good point but I'm also <laughs> very afraid to do that because it requires applying pressure directly to the weakest point on both the helmet and the nail underneath it so I'm just shaving off Super thin layers. So part of the reason that this ridge is asymmetrical is because I'm going off of where the armor stops because it's hitting the nail. Now the nail itself is asymmetrical and so that's giving me a you know crooked foundation. So the only way to solve that is to either have asymmetrical armor or have the armor not fit 100% you know like fit right down against the surface perfectly and that's what I want to opt for because that's more realistic to have the armor you know depending on how you move your armor is never going to fit perfectly to you unless it's some kind of magical metal or um, you know sci-fi memory metal or something like that But it's those kind of imperfections that uh, can really sell the, I don't want to say realism of your piece, but the, um, uh, there's another word for that that doesn't include the idea of realism. But it's like the buy-in that you have for this thing existing, even in a, in a weird magical context. It's the same reason that um, when you're designing creatures, monsters, orcs and goblins, dragons, that kind of stuff, uh, referencing real live animals and people and creatures is super helpful 
to giving that sense of um, believability. Uh, because when you use reference, you're, you're tapping into a form language that people have observed their whole lives. And when you just kind of go off of just random ideas in your head, uh, you're, you're foregoing that, uh, those psychological shortcuts that are built into people automatically. So you've got to work a lot harder on different, different hmm, foundations. I don't know. So you got to do something different to convince people that your thing is real. And I mean, maybe that comes about in animation or lore. I'm trying to think what else can sell people on a fantastical creature or concept when it doesn't reference actual things. Geraldo, hello. Welcome, Geraldo. hard to see the angles on this epoxy as I carve it. The surface is, um, I don't know, it's, maybe it's the lighting in here. If I, if I put really harsh lighting on here, I'd probably be able to see it better. But as it is, it's kind of hard to make out where the, where the angles meet. Yeah. 
taking me so much longer than I thought it would. Which should not come as a surprise, because literally everything takes me so much longer than I think it will. go on to doing the next layer and just um, sculpt my uh, angles into that as opposed to just continually carving back and forth on this because the carving is difficult to do on a piece that's still kind of flexing as you're, as you're working on it. bigger than this one. How did I not see that until just now? <laughs> it's because I'm hyper-focused on this area, and then that area, and then that area, and then that area. That's a, that's a constant struggle, is to step back and look at things holistically. I mean, there are times where I've found that I haven't done that step back, at all and I'll have spent you know I don't know 10 20 hours on a piece and then I step back and look at it usually because oh, I'm just wiped out and I see it the next day and I see it holistically and I'm like oh my gosh I made so many stupid dis decisions because I was hyper focused on one little area I guess that's a metaphor for life as well. It can happen when you're too focused on one thing in life. You let your health go, you let your relationships go, you let your job go when you're focused on one of the other things. I think what I'll probably do is end up closing some of this eye socket uh, with, with the next layer of clay. kind of like this line going down like that.
think I do. I'm not sure. Super glue this. Well, I guess I can super glue these guys down so they're not wiggling around. Because either way, I can't. I can't really pull them off with the helmet to do detail work on the helmet because they slot into the finger here. So it's probably better to have them fastened in place, and then I can just pop the helmet off, work on it, put it back off and on until I'm happy with the sculpting on it and then I can do my little attachment uh, near the end. Okay, which means I need super glue. Look at that, I have super glue, yay! Such a rare occasion. I bought a million of them, but still, um, still usually can't find them when I need them. Dottie says, the finger helmet reminds me of a mini demon hunter mask. <laughs> yeah, you know, we all have our subconscious influences. to mix some epoxy clay.
For those of you who haven't seen before, this is epoxy sculpt. It's a two-part um, epoxy clay that you sculpt with. Unlike uh, the plumber's putty and the pro sculpt that I used for the foundation of the helmet, this stuff you have a good one to two hours of working time before it sets up. Um, and it's designed to be sculpted with as opposed to the other stuff which is designed to just be blobbed onto broken pipes or whatever. And you can use this Aves uh, safety solvent as a um, well solvent, but it's great for smoothing it. So you can run your tools over it and get it really nice, uh, really nice, smooth, clean surfaces, something. Yuri Boyka, sup? How's it going? <laughs> With this uh, um, little sheet over it, it looks like it's got some like super cape going on. I don't think a cape would work very well for this particular creature, but it's a funny idea. Doing good? Excellent. I'm doing pretty good too. So the stage we are at now is I just finished carving down the base layer in ProSculpt and now I'm using epoxy uh, sculpt, epoxy clay, sculpt, epoxy sculpt to uh, coat it with my final, or close to final form. I'll probably end up carving this down a little bit as well, but I usually get about 80 or 90% of the way there just with the clay. Getting little bits of particulate in your clay does not help. Although fortunately this uh, helmet needs to be all dinged and banged up. So if there's imperfections in it, it's not, not the worst thing in the world. It's scraping off little bits of residue from the last time I used this tool. And then I'll start by just spreading a skin of this over the helmet. I uh, dip my tool in the safety solvent, get it nice and lubed up.
Yuri, my hand's coming along nicely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I was just saying before you came on that um, all I can see is a grievous proportional error that I made when I look at it. So I cannot see anything good about it right now. The only good thing I can see is that I'm almost done with it and I can get this tutorial out. Because it is due on the 1st. That is the deadline I gave myself. So since I since I carved my foundation down in such a way that I'm kind of minimizing the number of angles going on here, um, I think that's working pretty successfully as far as I can emphasize that with this new layer of clay without having to rediscover those uh, those planes and angles again. I think I'm not going to worry about uh, getting the, the sculpting on the inside of these eye sockets just right. At this point, I'll go ahead and carve those the way I want them. Um, when you're working in multiple stage um, process, as you usually do with epoxy sculpt, uh, you're always making strategic decisions based on uh, logistical issues like where can I put my fingers while I'm sculpting you know this other part without messing up uh, the previous part um, and because it's a multi-step process unlike a lot of times when people use polymer clay they try to do it all in one shot instead of doing multi-bake multi-stage baking and um, that's usually just asking for more trouble than you really need I think there's this I know I certainly had this feeling and I and I see a lot of other people acting as though they're also operating with it which is that um, there's something not ideal about doing things in multiple stages. The one thing that is truly not ideal is that often you're making uh, forms and there's a flow to the forms and when you need to interrupt that flow because you need to bake it, you know, bake the arm separately and then merge it into the shoulder, you know, in the next, in the next round you can lose your flow that way. So that is a legitimate concern. But I think I think the bigger issue is lost if that becomes a, 
a fo focal concern for you. At least that's the way it worked with me, and I've learned to embrace multi-stage sculpting. And you learn you learn tips and techniques as you go. You learn like where it's where it's natural to stop um, the flow. Like for instance, I keep squashing this area here because I'm holding it as I manipulate this, and uh, I I haven't really planned out <laughs> where where I can hold it when I'm doing the final pass on it. And I think the answer to that is I don't. It's just going to be blobby in an area or two and I'm going to have to go in and, and carve that to fix it. this eye socket smaller so that I have the option to carve them e either of the eye sockets I can make a little bit bigger but obviously you can't carve a hole smaller you can only carve holes bigger so if I make them both a little smaller than I want then I'm free to um, kind of slowly hone in on what I want the final form to be like. Yuri asking if I got any snow. No, no snow. None where you're at? That's good. Uh, Josh, looking you from Belgium. Yanislaw. Hey, Yanislaw, welcome to from Belgium. It's got to be snowy in Belgium, right? Aletha says, I want to come up with an idea and have it manifest itself right away without me having to take time and patience to finish it. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Someone needs to invent that machine. Idea Raider 2000. Now I'm torn. Do I want to actually attach these guys um, with the clay right now, which will then limit my ability to pop it off and carve it later? If I don't do that, though, then I'll be able to carve it, but then I'll, when I put it back down, I'm going to have to do another layer of clay to integrate these pieces. Or I could pop these out, carve off the part that, that sticks in to the little sockets on the side of the head, and then just kind of glue it back on when I'm when I have it where I want it. Hmm. Hmm. Questions, questions. go. You know, you probably I think one thing I could do is go ahead and cement them into place with the clay now. 
and if I need to pull them off it's such a small thing that it'll just kind of it'll either snap this part off inside the little hole in the finger or it'll scrape the finger and either way um, I think I'll be able to pop it off and back on without without messing it up so I'm gonna go ahead and connect it all now it's kinda like it's kinda like um, trying to hit for the home run but it's not a big deal if it ends up just getting me a base or two if I understand baseball correctly and I probably don't because I never watch it because I don't care about sports sorry rest of the world I know that makes me a bad person but it does save me an awful lot of time Jan says, yeah, it is. Haha, -ha. how do you know? It's snowing like just today. Are you a wizard? Of course. And that would explain the hand wizard. You know, I use my magical powers of deduction to uh, figure out that Belgium might be snowy this time of year. The little tip of this blade snapped off when I was carving it, so I'm trying to give it a little more material on the tip so I can carve it back down, hopefully without snapping it again, and uh, give it the nice menacing point that I wanted it to have. But it's pretty hard to get a teeny tiny tip of clay to stick right on a um, on a little extrusion like this. Yen says, how Josh, something just popped into my head. Would you like me to translate some of your videos in French? Just add subtitles on yours. That'd be awesome. Uh, the, more, the more subtitles, the better. Feel free to do as much of that as you like. Good luck uh, translating a lot of my mumbling, though. <laughs> Something I'm always trying to work on, but it's it's like uh, posh, having good posture. If you're not actively thinking about it, your body just reverts to what it does. So I tend to mumble a lot when I'm when I'm concentrating on things, and I tend to concentrate on my art when I'm working on art for some reason. And so uh, as a result, I tend to mumble, and I apologize for that. All I can promise is that when I think about it, as I am now, I, uh, I work on trying to enunciate.
ici. Jan says, haha, your accent is awesome, don't worry. Which one would you like to translate first? Or maybe should I contact you after? or don't want to disrupt you? Oh, don't worry, you're not disrupting me. Um, well, I imagine the most useful one would be my most popular one, which is the Sculpey 101 series. My, um, the first one of that series has over 100,000 views now, so... I imagine there are plenty of uh, French speakers who would appreciate having a nice French translation. That'd be awesome. Now I'm trying to step back and look at the big picture here. Symmetry is not perfect, but pretty close. I mean, there's an extra blob on this tip making it seem longer right now, but that'll be carved back. Um, Spoony divot smoothed out. Hmm. And if I need more clay around around this um, joint, I think I do. But uh, Yanislo, if you want to uh, contact me about any translation uh, questions or issues, if something I said is unclear and you want clarification, you could email me at uh, uh, breathoflifeart at gmail.com. Again, that is breathoflifeart at gmail.com Alrighty, I think that's I think that's sitting right now although mm, now it just looks all wonky and I wonder if it's because I hopped it out and then put it back in at a weird angle I'll, I think I'll just let it be for now. I'll go in and, and carve it up when this is set. I guess worst case scenario, I can always just break it off and then uh, reattach it as needed. Yeah, and says maybe some of the technical terms will be hard for me. If you agree to explain me some word when I don't get it, we have a deal. 
If not, I'll do my best alone. Yep, I'm very happy to help accommodate anyone's language barriers to the best of my ability. That's a good point to uh, leave it off, and um, I imagine uh, work I do on it between now and Wednesday will just be fixing symmetry and details on that, and then uh, I would guess Wednesday we'll be doing the final paint job on the hand, or at least the first step or two of that paint job, we'll see. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me today, guys, and hope you have a delightful rest of your Sunday. If you have the rest of your Sunday, if you're in Belgium, your Sunday is probably practically over. So sorry about that. But William Beaver, hello from the Dutch Lowlands. Wow, we got lots of EU people here. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, you got here just in time for me to leave. Sorry about that. But uh, we just watch it in retrospect and uh, tune in next time you guys see y'all later bye